Low, by Charles Hoyfort, Part 2, Chapter 23a, Melbourne Age, January 21st, 1869. There was a carter. He was driving a five-horse truck along the bed of a dry creek. Down the gully shot a watery fist that was knuckled with boulders. A dead man, a truck, and five horses were punched into trees. New Orleans Daily Picayune, August 6, 1893. A woman in a carriage, crossing a dried-up stream in Rawlings County, Kansas. It was a quiet, summery scene. There was a rush of water. The carriage crumbled. There was a spill of crumbs that were a woman's hat and the head of horses. Philadelphia Public Ledger, September 16, 1893. People asleep in the town of Villa Canas, Toledo, Spain. The town was raided by trees. Trees smashed through the walls of houses. People in bed were grabbed by roots. A deluge had fallen into a forest. Bright, clear day near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. From a sky swooped wrath that incited a river. It was one bulk of water. Two miles away, no rain fell. New Orleans Daily Picayune, July 11, 1893. A raging river jeered against former confinements. Some of its shibes were freight cars. It scoffed with bridges. Having made a high water mark of rebellion, it subsided into a petulance of jostling robots. Monistically, I have to accept that no line of demarcation can be drawn between emotions of minds and motions of rivers. These sudden, astonishing leaks from the heavens are not understood. Meteorologists study them meteorologically. This seems logical, and is therefore under suspicion. This is the fallacy of all the sciences. Scientists are scientific. They are inorganically scientific. Someday there may be organic science, or the interpretation of all phenomenal things in terms of an organism that comprises all. If our existence is an organism in which all phenomena are continuous, dreams cannot be utterly different in the view of continuity from occurrences that are said to be real. Sometimes, in the nightmare, a kitten turns into a dragon. Louth, Lincolnshire, England, May 29, 1920. The River Lud, which is only a brook, and is known as Tennyson's Brook, was babbling, or maybe it was purling. Out of its play, this little thing humped itself twenty feet high. A ferocious transformation of a brook sprang upon the houses of Louth, and mangled fifty of them. Later in the day, between banks upon which were piled the remains of houses, in which were lying twenty-two bodies, and from which hundreds of the inhabitants had been driven homeless, the little brook was babbling, or purling, 